hearts will glow with admiration when our new liner leaves the key. And the name loved by the nation will give her charm and dignity. British Labour gave it skin. Are you going to try for the blue ribbon, Captain? Well, naturally, that's what we're out for. What did we build her for? I booked my trip for the USA, so when I go over the sea, the Queen Mary takes me. I'm the cruise journalist Barry Vaudrin, and in this fifth video in our series, we're going to focus in on the dining aboard the original Queen Mary and the Queen Mary II. Dining aboard the original Queen Mary was truly an event where the passengers often felt like they were in a royal palace or the star in a great movie. On these ocean liners previous to the rise of the cruise industry, ships like the Queen Mary carried the reputation of an entire nation, which is why some of the liners back then were referred to as ships of state. With that in mind, the Queen Mary and her sister ship, the Queen Elizabeth, carried the responsibility to produce the highest quality Britain had to offer with the best chefs, the best cuisine, and a regal dining environment with an art deco design. The Queen Mary had a beautiful chart in the main dining room that allowed passengers to see the approximate position of their ship as it made its way across the Atlantic. Fast forward now to the future aboard the Queen Mary II and you can expect the same excellence reminiscent of the days of the original Queen Mary. The Britannia restaurant has the same regal elegance of an art deco past, placing passengers as the star of the show on a great stage. The service is impeccable. And while the passengers are the star of the show, the cuisine is the leading attraction. Extra efforts went into the design of the vintage and decorative crown moldings adorning the walls in the Britannia restaurant offering that feeling of being on a classic ocean liner of the past. On the original Queen Mary, it was said that the chefs were prepared to create any dish that a passenger asked for. For example, on the Queen Mary, a passenger asked for rattlesnake soup. And so the chefs got very creative and they brought out a wonderful steak with baby rattles. <laughs> Do you have anything, any stories that are similar to that? Well, let's have a look. The most unordinary thing. Let's have a look. Okay, QE2. I was um, chef de cuisine in the, the Queen's Grill, actually, which is a very, very five star deluxe restaurant. And we have a particular passenger called Mr. Rosenberg who used to travel with us every single year for the world voyage. And he was very, very renowned for asking for things that we really didn't have. So we did have a little bit of time to actually um, prepare ourselves. And there was, we were going over the Pacific and he said to me one night, he goes, oh, I fancy a suckling pig. Okay, so I said, yes, no problem, Mr. Rosenberg, we have that. No, from Tonga. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so we actually did. We sent a message uh, in, in, in ahead of time to actually um, Tonga, and they got us a sucking pig for us. And he's also renowned as well for asking things like for Kobe beef, etc., as well. But I think the most unusual thing was that I can remember was um, when he asked for a Hooters party as well. <laughs> so we had to <laughs> actually redo the um, Hooters style party oh. in the Queen's Grill, which a lot of people actually um, looked at in. <laughs> <laughs> but it was very enjoyable. But no, the, the most obviously um, memorable was actually the Tongan pig. My wife and I had the great privilege to dine in the luxurious Princess Grill. We had a great table in the corner of the restaurant with fabulous views, and we enjoyed visiting with the fascinating people at neighboring tables. Take a look at some of the Princess Grill cuisine. There are three basic dining options on Queen Mary II. The Britannia Restaurant, Princess Grill, and Queen's Grill. All of these dining options correspond with the type of stateroom or suite you are assigned. 
passengers in the Princess Grill or Queen's Grill have their own lounge and enjoy spacious and luxurious suites with concierge or butler service. We also dined in the incredible Todd English restaurant, which is available for all Queen Mary 2 passengers and offers an a la carte menu. This transatlantic crossing for me has tremendous meaning. It's been a very special opportunity for me to share this experience with my wife. And for those who are watching this video series, who are well-traveled, you've been there, done that, but you have not done a transatlantic crossing on an ocean liner, I want to encourage you to, to give this a try. Give this an opportunity because the reason I have been so passionate about the history of ocean liners, the history of the Queen Mary, and the design, construction, and launch of the Queen Mary II is because there is such a rich legacy in history that goes back generations of people who've gone back and forth across the Atlantic. And so this particular journey for me has tremendous meaning and value. And for you as well, I think that if you were to book yourself passage across the Atlantic, on the Queen Mary II, you two would understand and experience what I'm talking about when it comes to this history, nostalgia, and legacy. Uh, it's a regal journey, and it's an absolute must, and I hope you'll book passage very soon. For those who enjoy an exquisite and luxurious experience, on a cruise, contact Luxury Only at LuxuryOnly.com. I hope you will not miss the conclusion of this special series when I present my wife with a very special surprise on board the Queen Mary 2. This series has been made possible by these fine companies.